Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. Um, this is question number 10 from my end of topic worksheet on differentiation and question number 9 from the Solomon K collection of papers. Um, and this question is a question about differentiation. It says a curve has equation y equals root x minus 3 all squared, x is greater than or equal to 0. Show that dy dx equals 1 minus 3 over root x. Okay, so here we need to differentiate this expression. And from what we've learned in, in P1, um, to differentiate such an expression, we have to expand the bracket and express it as separate terms. So I'm going to write this expand in expanded form. So when you expand a bracket which is squared, there's a nice shortcut where you square the first term. So the square of root x is x. And then you multiply the two terms together. That gives you minus 3 root x, and then you double that. That gives you minus 6 root x, and then you square the last term, which gives you positive 9. It's always positive, the last term, because you're squaring a negative number. That's a short way of doing it. There's also the, you know, the traditional way of doing it, where you have root x minus 3 times root x minus 3, and you just multiply out the bracket. So root x times root x is x, and minus 3 root x, and then minus another 3 root x is minus 6 root x, and then minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9. Okay, the mistake that some students still make, even in AS, is they just square each term. So they'll say x mi minus 9 or x plus 9. And that's wrong. There was a middle term here. Okay, so now we have now differentiated it. And it's not quite ready for differentiation. Sorry, we have now expanded the brackets. We haven't started differentiating it. Now, there's one more thing we must do before we can start differentiating it. And that is to express this in third form as in index form. So that root x is going to be written as x to the power of a half. So you have x minus 6, x to the power of a half plus 9. Now it's ready to be differentiated. So dy dx is going to be, when you differentiate x, it becomes 1. Any x term just loses the x. And it, the constant that's multiplying is left. And then you've got um, to multiply by the power here. So you've got minus a half times 6, which is minus 3. And then you take 1 from the power. So a half minus 1 is a negative a half. So half minus 1 is like a half minus 2 over 2, which is negative 1 over 2. And the constant, when you differentiate, it becomes 0. So now we can just say that means dy dx, if you want to write it in the original form, is 1 minus 3 over x to the power of a half. You can write this in index form with the negative uh, power means a reciprocal. So this is like 3 times 1 over x to the power of a half, which is 3 over x to the power of a half. And then finally, we can just write that in third form. So it's 1 minus 3 over the square root of x as required in the question. Okay, that's what we're supposed to show. And we've shown that. That's part A done. Now part B says the point P on the curve has x coordinate 4. Find an equation for the normal to the curve at P in the form y equals mx plus c. So a normal to a curve is basically a straight line which is perpendicular to the tangent at the curve. So just say you had a curve that had this kind of shape and you had a straight line which is a tangent at a particular point so this would be the tangent at this point somewhere over here okay say this is the point p okay this is the tangent to the curve the normal to the curve would be a line which is perpendicular to that tangent if you have right angles to that tangent going through that same point p okay so that is a that is a normal to the curve this is the normal and this is the tangent to the curve Okay, so the normal is perpendicular to the tangent, but passes through the same point that the tangent passes through. So you're going to find the equation of a normal. It's a straight line. For a straight line, we need two things. We need to know the gradient of the line, which is the gradient of this normal, and we need to know a point on this line, okay, um, which is the point P. Now, with P, we know already the x value. We've got to find the y value. Now, because P is on the curve, the x value and y value of p is shared with the curve and the tangent and the normal. So it's a point which is on all three, the curve, the tangent, and the normal. So if I substitute x into the equation for the curve, I will find the y value at p, which is a point on the normal. So if I put x equals 4 into the equation, y equals root x minus 3, I'll have y equals the square root of 4 minus 3 squared. So y is equal to... That's going to be 2 minus 3 squared, which is minus 1 all squared, which is 1. So 4, 1 is therefore the point, 
And now we need to find the gradient of the normal. Now to find the gradient of the normal, um, we need to find the, ta the, 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 the gradient of the tangent. Okay, then the normal will be perpendicular to that. So the gradient of the tangent is the same as the gradient of the curve at the point P. And when we found dy dx, this is called the gradient function. This tells us the gradient of this function at any point we want to find it. So when x is equal to 4, and we will substitute that into the dy dx, which is the gradient function, it will tell us the gradient of the curve at that point P, which is the same as the gradient of the tangent at that point P. So if I substitute 4 into this function, I'll have 1 minus 3 over root 4, which is 1 minus 3 over 2, which is going to be minus a half. So that's the gradient of the tangent to the curve. Now the gradient of the normal to the curve is a negative reciprocal because it's perpendicular. All right, so if I take the gradient of the tangent and I write down its negative reciprocal, I'll get 2 over 1. Change the sign and flip it upside down. So this is the information I need now to find the equation of my straight line. Okay, so we have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. That's one, one way of doing so. I can just replace the y. The y1 is the y value of the point, so y minus 1. And m is the gradient, which is 2 times x minus the x value, which is 4. So I have y minus 1 equals 2x minus 8. Add 1 to both sides. I have y is equal to 2x minus 8 plus 1 is minus 7. That is the equation of the normal at P. So this is the equation of the normal at the point P. Okay, that's the answer to that question. We could have also used another method which some students prefer. Uh, I prefer to, to kind of gently push students into this using this method. You'll find it much easier later on. But some people do prefer to use just y equals mx plus c and substitute the y as 1, the m as 2, and the x as 4, and then find what the value of c is. So 1 is equal to 8 plus c. Subtract 8 from both sides. c is negative 7. And then just write it as y equals m, which is 2, x minus 7. Of course, you get the same answer. Okay, and that's perfectly fine as well. And there we have the answer to part B. Now, for part C, show that the normal to the curve at P does not intersect the curve again. So this is the normal. This is the equation of the normal. This is the equation of the curve. We've got to show that they only intersect at one place, basically. The place that we're, you know, the, that's the point P. Okay, so the point P was, if you remember, it was x equals 4 and y equals, was it 1? Yeah, it's 4, 1. All right, that's the point P. So that's, we should got to show that that's the only place that these two intersect. Now, to find where two graphs intersect, we have to solve them simultaneously. It means we have to substitute one into the other. So, for example, if I replace the x here, the y here, with 2x minus 7, so I get 2x minus 7 equals, instead of y, I put 2x minus 7, that's equals the square root of x minus 3 squared, and I solve this equation, I should find um, the places where they intersect, and hopefully we'll show that there's only one place at which they intersect okay, using this method. So let's just now solve this equation. So we need to expand the bracket over here, which will give us, as we did before, x minus 6 root x plus 9. And now we're going to bring everything onto one side of the equation to make it say equal zero because I've no, I can spot here what's called a disguised quadratic because the x is the square of root x. So we can use um, a, a technique called disguised quadratics to solve this. So let's just make it say equal zero. So 2x minus x is x minus uh, you add root, uh, add six root x to both sides to get plus six root x, and we take away nine from both sides to get minus 16 equals zero. Now, I can see that the square root of x, if I square it, I get x. So let's say the square root of x is equal to b. That means x is equal to b squared. All right, squaring root x will give me b squared. Okay, so this is, all right, we can replace now the x with b squared, and we can replace the root x with b. So we have b squared plus 6b minus 16 equals 0. Now this can be solved by factorizing. I can see that there are two numbers that multiply 
to give me minus 16 and add to give me plus 6. That's 8 and 2. 8 is a positive and, B, and, and 2 must be negative. So B plus 8 times B plus minus 2 equals 0. So we can say B is equal to negative 8 and B is equal to positive 2. So now that's not our solution because we know that the root of x is equal to b. So I can replace the b with root of x. So the square root of x equals negative 8 and the square root of x equals 2. Now very, 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 very important. The square root of x was given to us in the question already. We didn't put it there. What it means is the positive square root of x. So when I write the positive square root of x equals b and the positive square root of x equals something, okay? It means just the positive square root. So if I say the positive square root of x equals negative 8, that doesn't make sense. There is no positive square root of x which is equal to negative 8. So there's no solution to this part of the question. It's a very important point. But the square root of x equals positive 2, well, that's, that's perfectly fine. There is a value for which the square root of that value gives you positive 2. And that value is, if you find out by squaring both sides, you have x equals 2 squared, which is 4 which is the value, the x value of p, where we know that the, the, the line is a tangent, sorry, it's a normal to the curve, and a tangent actually, but it's a normal to the curve. But that, that, that line here, y equals 2x minus 7, intersects the curve at that point when x equals 4. And as you can see from the equation, it doesn't intersect anywhere else. This leads to no solution, because this, the positive square root of x can't be negative 8. This is, this is something that's undefined. So therefore, Okay, the, there is only one, there is only one, there is one solution only to this. One solution only to the simultaneous equation that we made. So therefore, um, y equals 2x minus 7 intersects the curve only once at p, you can say. Okay, some statement to qualify um, our finding. You should write some statement, okay? So the only time it intersects the curve is at p, nowhere else. Okay, so there's the answer to part c, and that's question number 10 from the endotopical work she answered. It's also uh, question number 9 from the Solomon K paper, Thank you for watching and see you soon.